Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform date time calculations with whole days or fractions of a day, like hours and minutes, in Microsoft Access. Before you watch this video, make sure you understand query criteria and calculated query fields. If not, go watch these videos. You'll find links down below. So in Microsoft Access, date values are numbers where a value of one equals one day. And because of that, we can do some pretty cool stuff. For example, if you have a field called my date, which could be any date value, if you add one to it, that's tomorrow. If you subtract one from it, that's yesterday. If you want to add a week, plus seven. If you want to add 30 days, plus 30, and so on. So here, for example, I made a query where I brought in a table that's just got an ID and a date field. And then right here, I made a calculated query field that says X equals my date plus 30. So we're going to add 30 days to that date. Now, when I run the query, there you go. There's a list of dates that are all 30 days after my date. If you've got invoices, for example, you can make your due date 30 days in the future by using a calculated field right in the report. There's my text box right there, and you can see it's equals order date plus 30. You just stick that right in the properties in the control source. You can use this technique to calculate the difference between two dates in days. For example, end date minus start date will give you the count in days. Here I have another table where I've got a start date and an end date. And right here, I put day count colon end date minus start date. Make sure you have the larger date first. Larger dates are dates in the future. And when I run this query, you can see right there, there's my day count between each of these sets of dates. You can use date values as criteria, either static dates. And remember, you have to put dates inside of pound symbols like this. Right, this says all dates less than February 1st, 2022, or this one says greater than or equal to 2122. Or you can use the date function, which puts the current date in there, the current system clock date, whatever your computer's set to. So this is less than today's date, less than seven days from now, which is within a week, or less than 30 days from now. So for example, in this query, I'm saying, show me all the records with dates less than 30 days from now. You can use this with orders, for example, to say, show me all of the orders that are due within the next 30 days. And if I run this guy, there you go. And again, today is 2-19-2022. Ignore the last record. Remember, that's a blank new record that doesn't really exist yet. I can flip that around and say greater than today's date. And that'll show me all of the orders that aren't due yet. These are all future dates. And again, ignore that last one. Now, knowing that the value of one is equal to a day, you can use fractions of a day to calculate hours, minutes, and seconds. For example, if you add 1 24th to a date value, it'll give you one hour in the future. 1 over 24 over 60 is one minute. Yeah, let Access do the math. You could figure that calculation out yourself, but just let Access do it. So here in this query, for example, I'm taking a time value, and this field will add one hour to it, right? Plus 124. This field will add one minute to it. In Access, M is for month, and N is for minute. So I used N there. And when I run this query, there you go. This column is my time plus one hour, and this is my time plus one minute. And sure, you could do seconds divided by 60 again. Now you can use the techniques that I just showed you to calculate days, weeks, hours, minutes, and seconds. But if you want to calculate whole months, that's a little bit trickier. There are some functions called date diff and date add, which you can use to calculate months, quarters, years, and more. So if you need two calendar months, for example, between two dates, these functions will give you that. It's a little more complicated than just individual days because some months have 30 days, some have 31, some have 28, and so on. I've got more free videos that explain these functions. Again, you'll find links down below. So there you go. There's everything you need to know to do some basic date math in your Microsoft Access databases. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.